A couple of important things happened today. I mean, obviously SpaceX launched their Crew Dragon to the ISS, but perhaps more importantly, I launched my glider today. Welcome back to The Fundamentals. Today we're going to be talking about vehicle design and aerodynamics, and this is not fundamentals. Okay, we're sticking with it anyway. So this Christmas break, after about half a semester of introduction to aerodynamics, I decided to throw together a little glider. You can see it here. I don't have a lot of footage of it because I built it at home and not up here in Boulder, so I can't really show it to you. Little did I know that about three months later I'd be building a new glider now with another half semester worth of vehicle design and aerodynamic experience. I'm pretty much an expert at this point. And this is the result of that extra half semester of vehicle design and performance, that's the name of the class, uh, which is really just an extension of my intro to aerodynamics. You can see this is different from the first glider I built, and there's good reason for it. One of the first things you might notice is the elliptical wing shape, which is obviously different from the square wing that I had on my old glider. Oh, youthful ignorance. The reason it's elliptical is because of a concept called span efficiency. This is something that only comes into play when you have a three-dimensional wing, um, as opposed to the two-dimensional wings we were looking at in my introduction to aerodynamics. Or if you're someone that has a problem with two-dimensional wings, you can think of it as an infinite wing. But because these 3D wings aren't infinite, we actually have air leak over the wingtip. So you might have heard the explanation for lift that says because air goes over the top of a wing, it has to travel further in the same time, so it goes faster, which makes it lower pressure, which means your wing gets sucked up. Now, that's not true, mainly because air going over the top of the wing doesn't actually take the same amount of time as air going under the wing. It does flow faster though, and I'll probably make a dedicated video on this topic because there's a lot of misconceptions about lift. But at the end of the day, there is high pressure under the wing, regardless of how it forms. And this high pressure air wants to leak over the wingtip into the low pressure zone, which creates the vortices at the end of wings, which you can see when they fly through clouds or smoke, and it also creates a lot of drag and reduces your lift. So what does this have to do with my knockoff Spitfire? Well, one way to reduce the vortices at the end of your wingtip is to have an elliptical lift distribution. So it's this shape so it's more efficient, and the same goes for the elliptical tail. Originally I was planning on making it a T-tail, which would have the elevator right on top, but because our elevator has to be able to move, we just stuck it in the middle so there was actually some material to hold on to. Long story short, you're more efficient if your tail isn't being affected by your wing, which is why some planes use this, specifically a lot of gliders, but it is a bit more complicated to build on a full-scale aircraft, and it puts more structural load on your vertical tail, so it's not universal. And finally, a common design feature between these two gliders is the dihedral, which is the wings bending up. This makes it so your plane is stable in the roll direction. Now, the main difference is this entire wing is dihedral, while my old one just had the wingtips, but the effect is the same. I don't know if I have the best explanation of how dihedral works, but I'll try. So imagine your plane is flying pretty much straight and level, and then it gets hit by a gust of wind and turns and rolls. What happens now is your plane starts to slide down. Now the reason this happens is because your wing is creating lift in this direction, gravity is in this direction, and nothing is going in this direction to hold you in place, so you end up moving. What this causes is air to move this direction over your plane. And because this wing is angled like that, more air gets under it and creates lift to roll you back to center. And this wing is closer to vertical, meaning it catches more air and gets pushed down. The fuselage also helps in this case because it blocks air from getting under the wing to this wing, which further reduces the lift and basically just makes you more stable in roll. And there's other ways of keeping your roll stable. If you sweep your wings back, like a lot of flying wings do, that helps. That also helps with yaw. And of course, you can always have a pilot and active control, but uh, that was sort of out of the scope of this project. So now I'll just talk about some of the interesting parts of this project, which is learning all the equations for this stuff, and then a lot of simplifications and assumptions we made. So one is how we found the size of the tail. When I made my original glider, I guessed, honestly. But now we have equation. So there's an equation that gives you something called a coefficient of volume for your vertical and your horizontal tail. I guess it's two equations. 
but essentially it tells you how big it is in comparison to the size of your wing and also accounts for the distance between them because obviously the further back your tail is, the smaller it needs to be to give you control. Now this equation doesn't immediately spit out a tail size you need. You actually have to assume your volume coefficient, which we did by looking at normal airplanes and seeing about where they landed. Uh, it was about in this range, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but by assuming those numbers, we found the area we need for a tail, and this area was supposed to give us our yaw stability, but pitch stability is a bit more complicated. So the CG of our entire airplane, which is where it balances, is around the quarter chord of the wing, meaning a quarter of the way back from the leading edge. This is a pretty good rule of thumb for most airplanes. And most airfoils have their aerodynamic center in that same place. What is an aerodynamic center? I will get into it in the lift video. But in general, it's where we assume the forces on the wing are being applied. Um, for cambered airfoils, which are the curved ones, the ones we're used to seeing, um, you add a constant moment or torque I will get into it in the lift video, this is the fundamentals, I can't- Okay, so, our force is applied in the middle, that is, lift in this direction, and because our CG is in front of it, that pitches our nose down. That's bad because it means if we throw this without the tail, it flies into the ground. That's where the tail comes in. We put a downward pitch on the tail, this pushes the tail down, and lifts the nose back up. The exact angle we put on here is calculated by balancing the torque from the wing, and the torque from the tail to fly at our optimum angle, which was about three and a half degrees, I think. So here, maybe a little lower, but most planes actually have the entire wing tilted up to achieve that angle, that way you can fly flat. That's for a few reasons. One of them's probably comfort, because you don't want to fly in a plane like this all the time, and also it reduces drag. The reason we didn't do that is because tilting our plane up doesn't really increase drag that much, because it's literally a stick. And also, it's kind of hard to measure exactly three and a half degrees and glue a foam board wing onto a stick at that angle. So we just tilted the entire plane. It was easier. But I'll leave you with some footage that I took on our flight test day, also known as this morning, like an hour ago. The first one, which I probably used as the intro to this video, didn't go super well. It hit a pole, but it survived because this thing's like pretty much indestructible at this point. Our second flight was perfect, we landed right in the tarp, then we went and threw it outside, and I'll throw in some footage of the other planes flying. Some of them crashed, some of them did better than ours, because this thing's kind of heavy, pushing the weight limit. For now, I'm kind of happy, and I'll see you in the next video.